what happens before you hear the psst of a perfectly chilled Coca-Cola. Behind that moment lies more than a century of engineering. Water treated to near laboratory standards, a protected aromatic formula, carbonation calibrated to the millimeter, and automated lines that fill, seal, and inspect thousands of containers per minute under rigorous controls. In this video, we'll see step by step how science, processes, and logistics come together to bring the world's most iconic soda to life. The story begins in 1886, when pharmacist John Stith Pemberton in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, created a syrup originally intended to relieve headaches and digestive discomfort. His formula blended botanical extracts, including coca leaf, which was legal at the time, with traces of alkaloids, caffeine-rich cola nut, and a base of essential oils solubilized in alcohol. Over time, as laws and medical knowledge evolved, the company that inherited the brand completely removed any psychoactive components, maintaining only a processed alkaloid-free coca leaf extract, along with cola essence and a signature aromatic profile. Since then, the formula has been protected under extreme confidentiality protocols. Only a small group knows the exact proportions and blending processes. The rise of the beverage paralleled industrialization, the expansion of bottling, and mass advertising. In 1915, the iconic contour glass bottle silhouette was defined, created to be recognizable even by touch, and by 1929 the product had left behind pharmacy soda fountains to establish a franchised bottling system with standardized technical specifications. During the 20th century, the company refined water purification methods, bricks control, carbonation, isobaric filling, and logistical traceability. Today, a global network of plants applies nearly clinical parameters to ensure sensory uniformity across more than 200 markets, producing billions of units per day. Understanding this level of consistency requires a close examination of each link in the production chain. More than 90% of Coca-Cola is water. That's why it is treated as an active ingredient rather than just a carrier. Each plant sources from local supplies, deep aquifers, springs, artesian wells, or high-volume municipal networks, and subjects the water to a complex treatment train monitored online and verified by laboratory testing. An initial screening step removes coarse particles. This is followed by mesh filters and granular media of different sizes that trap sand, silt, clays, and macroscopic organic residues. Differential pressure sensors indicate when to backwash to maintain flow. High surface area activated carbon beds remove compounds that cause taste or odor, free chlorine, chloramines, phenolic traces. In parallel, ion exchange resins reduce hardness by removing calcium and magnesium ions when needed, improving syrup and carbonation stability. The water then passes through semi-permeable membranes under high pressure. This process retains over 99% of dissolved salts, heavy metals, nitrates, pesticides, and microorganisms, resulting in very low conductivity. An ultraviolet or ozone step inactivates bacteria, viruses, and spores without generating chlorinated byproducts. Then, safety filters, fine micron cartridges, serve as the final barrier. Overly demineralized water tastes flat and can be chemically aggressive. That's why precise amounts of calcium, magnesium, and potassium salts are added back to achieve the mineral profile defined by the brand. The pH is adjusted to a slightly acidic neutral range to enhance flavor stability and optimal interaction with the master syrup. The goal is to create a chemically uniform water canvas so that a drink produced in the mountains or at sea level has the same mouthfeel, bubble brightness, and aftertaste. Each batch of water is validated with measurements of turbidity, conductivity, total hardness, alkalinity, microbiological counts, and taste tests with a trained panel. Only then is it authorized to move to the mixing lines. While the water reaches its purity standard, vacuum-sealed containers of flavor concentrate arrive at the plant. They are handled under protocols that limit oxygen contact, nitrogen purging, control temperature, and record every transfer using digital traceability. Inside is the sensory heart of the product, a sugar base or high fructose corn syrup, depending on local regulations and availability, highly pure anhydrous caffeine, class IV caramel coloring, 
E150D for the deep amber hue, phosphoric acid for the typical tang, and a complex blend of essential oils, cinnamon, citrus, like lime, vanilla, nutmeg, orange blossom, among others. Internally, this blend is called an aromatic merchandise, able to fix the flavor notes and give persistence without overwhelming the palate. A unique component is the fully decoconized coca leaf extract, legally produced by an authorized US supplier. It contains no psychoactive alkaloids. Its function is both sensory and technical. It offers a subtle herbal nuance and helps stabilize certain volatiles. Each ingredient arrives with a certificate of analysis, specifications, contaminant limits, and temperature loggers to ensure chain integrity. The concentrate, with a viscosity similar to light honey, about 15 centipoise, is discharged into stainless steel tanks with sanitary finishes and CIP, clean-in-place seals. Diaphragm pumps with Coriolis mass flow meters dose with millimetric precision into mixers. Pneumatic valves, flow, temperature and pressure sensors, and a distributed control system, DCS, orchestrate dosing to replicate the master formula parameters. The master syrup is the intermediate solution that provides sweetness, color, acidity, and flavor profile. It is made by diluting the concentrate in purified water and adjusting the soluble solids content measured in degrees bricks to the target value. Inline infrared sensors estimate bricks and density. If variations are detected, the system compensates by adding water or syrup to maintain the correct point. Everything occurs at a controlled temperature in large volume mixing tanks, e.g. 20,000 liters, with axial flow agitators that promote gentle mixing without incorporating air. Food-grade phosphoric acid, usually a 40% solution, is used to achieve the exact acidity. Due to its low solubility at room temperature, caffeine is pre-dissolved in hot water and added in a controlled manner to avoid clumps or precipitation. Automation records residence times, pressures, and flow rates, generating a historical record that enables audits of every variable. At the end, samples are taken to confirm pH, bricks, relative density, color by spectrophotometry, and caffeine concentration. In the finished product, caffeine is typically around approximately 96 mg per liter, although this may vary by local regulations and product version. Only after passing these tests is the master syrup released to the final beverage stage. To create the final drink, the master syrup is mixed with treated water at a typical ratio of about 1 to 5, 1 part syrup to 5 parts water, though the exact ratio depends on the variant. The mixture is rapidly cooled in plate exchangers to around 2 degrees Celsius, as lower temperatures increase the solubility of carbon dioxide and prevent foam formation. This allows more gas to be incorporated with less loss. Carbonation takes place in pressurized vessels operating, for example, between 3.8 and 4.2 bar. Microporous diffusers generate fine, uniform bubbles, maximizing the gas-liquid contact area. Coca-Cola typically contains about 8 grams of CO2 per liter, a high carbonation level compared to other beverages, contributing to its crisp, biting sensation. As CO2 dissolves, it forms carbonic acid, responsible for the refreshing kick at the first sip. Redundant instruments, conductivity, apparent density, pressure and temperature ensure system stability. If a deviation occurs, the DCS adjusts pressure or diverts the batch for reprocessing. Once carbonated, the beverage enters a stainless steel and sensor choreography moving at astonishing speeds. Plants that produce their own bottles start from pet preforms, short, thick tubes that are heated to about 100 degrees Celsius and stretch blown into metal molds. The result is lightweight bottles with uniform walls and geometries designed to withstand internal CO2 pressure. Returnable or single-use glass bottles and aluminum cans undergo ultra-fast rinsing with ozonated or ionized water to remove any particles or residual microbes without leaving flavors or chemical residues. To prevent gas loss or foaming, the filling valves equalize the pressure between the carbonator tank and the container. This isobaric filling enables highly precise levels. All this happens in fractions of a second. Immediately, sealing takes place. Screw caps for PT, 
crowns for glass, or double seaming for cans. Torque levels, e.g. around 1.5 newton meters for some plastic caps, and resin liners ensure airtight sealing. Rotary machines apply paper labels or shrink sleeves. Inkjet or laser coders print batch, date and time. Each unit is identified with an alphanumeric code that traces the plant, line and production shift. High resolution cameras check fill levels, seal integrity, code readability and defect presence. If a bottle doesn't meet standards, a pneumatic ejector removes it to a rejection carousel. Defect rates, causes and corrective actions are recorded for operational feedback. Step 7. Comprehensive quality control, traceability and distribution. Before leaving the plant, each batch passes a double filter, physico-chemical tests and sensory evaluation. In the lab, turbidity, pH, bricks, conductivity, CO2 content, caffeine and phosphoric acid are measured, as well as microbiological counts. Meanwhile, a panel of trained tasters compares the product with a standard profile, color, brightness, aroma, bubble bite, sweet acid balance, and any metallic or bitter notes. Only compliant batches proceed to logistics. Shipping begins with palletization. Shrink-wrapped packs are grouped into stacks and labeled with barcodes or RFID. Automated warehouses use stacker cranes, shuttles, and laser-guided vehicles to place each pallet based on destination and rotation priority. Plants supply regional distribution centers that consolidate orders combining formats, can, glass, PET, flavors, and presentations. Deliveries are scheduled in trucks, usually refrigerated between 4 degrees Celsius and 10 degrees Celsius, a range that helps preserve CO2 and flavor profile. For long distances, intermodal containers or climate-controlled rail cars are used. Temperature, vibration, and humidity sensors transmit real-time data to monitoring platforms so that if a deviation occurs, action can be taken immediately. Once at urban hubs, the load is redistributed into smaller vehicles, including electric vans in restricted zones, to supply supermarkets, restaurants, gas stations, and vending machines. Thanks to this staggered network, the time between bottling and point of sale is usually short, generally within a few weeks, preserving bubble liveliness and aromatic character. Behind every bubble lies science, engineering, and operational rigor. From water sourcing and purification to the protection of a historic formula, isobaric filling, and artificial vision inspection, everything is designed to replicate the same balance of sweetness, acidity, and fizz anywhere in the world. Understanding these steps reveals the technical and logistical work behind such an everyday act as opening a can.